as Chelsea come out of the tunnel today, they turn to their right and not to their left. The face of Stamford Bridge completely changed by a new landmark on the London skyline. The new North Stand, built at a cost of £8.6 million and seating around 8,500 spectators in two tiers. 5,000 of those seats in use for the first time today. Chelsea members in the upper tier hoping this will become very much the home end of the ground which for years was centred on the old shed that's now been replaced by temporary seating until the south end redevelopment which is due to happen next. As for the team, well they're keeping pace with a place in the quarterfinals of Europe and sixth position in the Premiership. Two changes from the 0-0 draw at Spurs on Wednesday. Craig Burley is preferred to David Rocastle on the right and up front Gavin Peacock is fit to replace Neil Shipperley. Glenn Hoddle, the player manager, names himself as a substitute. Everton make an enforced change from the side that beat Liverpool in Joe Royal's first match. John Everill is injured, so Barry Hall moves to centre midfield and Anders Limpar comes in from the cold on the right. Paul Rideout, who came on as a substitute on Monday and scored, keeps his place alongside Duncan Ferguson and that means the Nigerian Daniel Amakachi drops to substitute. Robbie Hart from Darlington starts a match which marks an historic day at Stamford Bridge. Everton, in fact, attacking the new stand end in the first half, all in white. That's uh, Duncan Ferguson. And here's Anthony Barnes for Chelsea at right back. In fact, Chelsea are playing with two left footers in the fullback positions. Barnes uh, is more naturally left sided, but he's doing well there because Steve Clark's injured. Unsworth. It, uh, came off wise to Limpar. Ferguson with his arm up in the centre. Right out slightly nearer to Limpar here. There he is, but Ferguson. Oh, now it's run on for Parkinson. Well, Joe Parkinson found himself in an unexpected acre of room there. Limpar was looking the other way and then slipped it beautifully through the legs of Nigel Spackman. The fact that Sinclair slipped and lost his boot didn't help Chelsea, but the shot certainly did from Parkinson. It went wide. And Spencer. Oh, it was given away by Spackman. Now Watson for Everton. But they've given it away as well. Spencer, wise. Spencer's gone again. Eddie Newton waiting in the centre, among others. There he is! Good save, Sample. Newton denied by the goalkeeper, as indeed he was on Wednesday. And this is Minto. Now Wise. And Newton tries again. And Wise tries again. Hook the bounce. Speak up. No. Thrilling sequence of events there. Wise at the heart of it, with a push back first of all here to Eddie Newton. The ball flies up, Wise with the overhead acrobatics. Oh, Southall was standing, admiring as he hit the post, and then Peacock put the rebound wide. The goalkeeper was well beaten, but the post saves Everton. Well, that's really got the crowd going. Burley. That's Spencer. Oh, two Everton players colliding, and uh, when you get hit by Duncan Ferguson, you know you've been hit, and the referee will be concerned about this because uh, anything in the way of a facial injury needs immediate attention. The two strikers, Rideout and Ferguson, colliding, and Rideout coming off worse. Well, that was a nasty crack for Paul Rideout. Caused inadvertently by his own striking partner, Duncan Ferguson, who virtually went straight through his face. So Rideout seems to have recovered.
Joe Royal, a former centre forward himself, would have wondered which one of his strikers called for that ball when they collided. This is uh, in by Ablett. In part. Oh, and they got him three right out. And he scored. He was virtually unmarked. And Paul Rideout scores for Everton, a goal made by Anders Limpar. The Swedish player bent the cross in without having to beat Minto. And look at Rideout, there's nobody within a yard. And from the six-yard line, Karin's got no chance. The 39th minute, and Paul Rideout, who scored against Liverpool on Monday, gets his sixth of the season here today, Everton's top scorer. And the Joe Royal era for Everton is starting well. And he must have been pleased with the service in from Limpar, the player he's recalled today, Joe Royal. This is uh, another chance for Everton to get the ball in from the right. They've got uh, Ferguson waiting in the centre. Also, Hinchcliffe is there now. Jackson. And there is Ferguson, and it needed a good header by Kielberg. And Chelsea are beleaguered at the moment in defence. These crosses from the right-hand side are giving them a few headaches. And as Hinchcliffe prepares to take this one, they've got Jackson on the near post with right out. Watson and Ablett coming from deeper positions. And Ferguson's in there too. There's, oh, and Watson, oh, what a good clearance off the line. And again, I think it was Dennis Wise on the, on the line there. That could have been 2-0. And uh, the man on the post, I think it was Wise, saves Chelsea. Here it comes, and it certainly is, from right on the post as Watson came in, Wise was there. Glenn Hoddle's team, just at this moment, coming off second best. This is Spencer, that's a foul, Parkinson. Chelsea turn this round right on half time. It's a free kick. This is Wise. Kjellberg's on the far side. They've got a corner. Good defending by Matt Jackson. Now Wise needs to get the delivery right here. Spackman has moved up as well. So has uh, Sinclair. There's Sinclair's flick. Oh, great save, Southall. Oh, wonderful save. Brilliant goalkeeping by Neville Southall. The corner is taken by Wise, flicked on by Sinclair. That was Peacock, I think. And somehow Everton scrambled it away. Peacock. Barnes. Ooh, did well the fullback, but uh, that's. Burley coming in, corner again to Chelsea. This is definitely their last chance of the first half. Kjellberg is there. And so are Boris uh, Everton feet, but it's uh, corner again. Not time to take it, it's half time. And the first half ends with plenty of incidents. Paul Rideout scores for Everton, the first goal in front of Chelsea's new stand, but the first away by Everton in the Premiership since August. That's over 600 minutes of football, and he's ended that barren run. But then his goalkeeper, Neville Southall, made a stunning save to prevent Chelsea from equalising.
Well, who is going to be the first Chelsea player to score in front of the new North Stand, I wonder. They're attacking that way in the second half. And they're one down. Everton looking for their first away win of the season. And that little scramble ends with referee dropping the ball. It's Peacock. Ferguson off for a throw-in. Right out. And that was a miscue by Joe Parkinson, which is uh, cleared up by Jackson. corner given and uh, again Dave Watson on his way forward and Jackson oh and Ferguson came in above the post goodness me Duncan Ferguson holds his head in anguish Chelsea again struggling with to cope with his height and it flew across and came off the post and stayed on Chelsea's side of the line for Kareen. So now both teams have seen one come back off the post. Wise for Chelsea and Ferguson for Everton. But 2-0 there and the home side would have been staring possibly at defeat. Peacock. Spencer. That was better from Chelsea. Kevin Peacock with the overhead cross. John Spencer challenged, just drifting the header wide. That's aimed at right out. He's come in the other side of uh, Sinclair, off Kjellberg. This is Limpar. Horn. That was Ferguson did that well. Hinchcliffe now. Parkinson's there. Hits the bar. Jackson. Put up. Joe Parkinson. Oh, Everton have been unlucky on two attempts here in the second half. Hinchcliffe's cross. Lovely header as he stooped. Beat the goalkeeper back off the bar. Chelsea decide, or he decides, this is the time to use the player manager, Glenn Hoddle. 37 years of age now, comes on to replace Craig Burley. But Chelsea may have a say here yet. There goes Furlong. Spencer's nipping in, and he is in. Good cover by Unsworth, but not good enough. Wise! That's not good enough either. That's a really bad miss by the England man. Possibly Chelsea's best chance. It was Spencer that wriggled his way clear. He did ever so well with the cross. And unfortunately for Wise, it skimmed off his left foot or his shin almost. And went wide. Oh, it looked a bit dangerous from Sinclair. Limpa squeezed it across, Ferguson's there. Oh, Parkinson, and it was deflected. It's a corner. Twice Parkinson's come close to opening his Everton account today. It was uh, a volley, and it, it hit Kjellberg on the side of the head. So Everton have another corner. And again, it's this Watson-Ferguson threat 
that Chelsea have to be aware of. Yeah. Oh, it's in. Right out, looks to be claiming it. Kareem. No, no, it's not. It's not been given, has it? No, it's a free kick. The referee has not allowed the goal, I don't think. He's standing in the penalty area. And somebody's going to be booked here. It may have been Ferguson for contesting the decision. Rideout's also been arguing. And the goal does not stand. Rideout got up. It went in. But the referee saw an infringement in there. And Everton are once again denied the second goal. Spackman. is in there, this is Spencer, good save by Southall, well one or two people questioned him a week or two ago, the Welsh International, but he's made two outstanding and important saves for Everton today at least, and he may have clinched the victory with that save, but maybe not, here's Hoddle, he's given it away to Limpa, Ferguson starts a run down the centre of the pitch, and he's looked as though he might be in here. Spackman's the defender. Ferguson, oh, a good save at the other end. <laughs> a real ebb and flow to the game in injury time. Dimitri Kareen from Duncan Ferguson. That was close to being Chelsea's first goal in front of the new stand but Spencer was denied by Southall Spackman forward and the header back in Sinclair's in there Watson manages to get it half away and then Hinchcliffe and Chelsea still have a chance. It's going to be wise to take the corner. Kjellberg is up. So is Sinclair. Difficult one for Southall. <laughs> and it comes out to Limpar. That little touch really relieves it for Everton. And they've got a runner on the far side of the pitch. It's Duncan Ferguson on the ball. And onside, both of them. Well, this could surely be the final act. And Barry Horn has put it wide. Well, that was extraordinary. It was Gary Ablett who made the run on the far side here. He slid across to Horn. It was an invitation, really. And he didn't take it, but it didn't matter because the final whistle has gone. All sorts happened in the last five minutes. But the sum total of it is that Everton have won away for the first time this season, thanks to Rideout. It's two wins out of two for Joe Royal. And the Everton recovery has started now with a vengeance. A run of five games unbeaten. Southall two superb saves as Chelsea strove to save the game. Having said that, Everton hit the post, the bar, had one disallowed. And on the day their new stand opens, Chelsea troop off beaten at home by a side whose resolution today seemed to suggest they won't be dealing with the word relegation. Chelsea nil, Everton won. Joe, you've only been at Everton a short time, but how will you sum up the first week and a half? I mean, what, what have you worked on? What have you seen that, that, that's made you decide which way to go? Probably a little bit more passion and a little bit more directness about our game. Um, I felt that at times we were playing one pass too many when I looked at the video and that's that's no criticism of what's happened before just a personal view of how the game should be played and as a forward I said to our forwards you must be frustrated at times not knowing when to run and where to run so we try to give the forwards a little bit more of a chance by playing this earlier but overall more than anything else a team spirit and a passion and a desire to win the game and you can see by their faces and the performance that they're responding I think he's encouraging us to uh to press the ball and when we do get the ball then, then to be confident on it and take our time and you know play from there because as I say I mean he's got confidence in our ability I 
think he tried to instill in us that it's not Route 1 the way we're going to play. Uh, we, we like to play at times, but also if, if nothing's on, we'll, we'll get it in the channels and get in behind them. As I say, in, from today we created enough chances to maybe win three or four. A lot of spirit and resolution about that Everton performance all round, I thought. Yeah, I mean, especially midfield, they w they won everything. And uh, uh, again, at the, at the back, we haven't given we've given one goal away in five games now, which is tremendous. Uh, we're throwing them in at the start of the season, and now once we stop that and we started scoring again, uh, we're getting the results. They, they played well, worked hard, Everton, and it caused us a lot of problems. Uh, we we needed to win today, and we didn't get the result we wanted. I mean, you've been in pretty good form recently, for England nonetheless, and yet the second half one that uh, went the wrong side of the post, I would imagine you were a bit disappointed about. Yeah, I was. Uh, I hit the post in the first half as well with an overhead kick. Uh, I was unlucky there, and then it came up me very quick. I changed my mind, uh, and I've, I've just ski-whiffed it, basically. I can't say much to that. Uh, and that's it, really.